So, all right, thank you all for joining us for another roundtable, Sports Influencer Roundtable session. Uh, it is whatever the, the day is, it's Blur's Day uh, <laughs> during this COVID quarantine season. And we are excited today. We have got some absolute all-stars joining us. Um, the Heads Up is extremely proud of these two guys. Um, we have been following them, Coach, way longer than me. I've seen enough to know I'm a fan. I'm a diehard. I get excited for both of them to see them uh, accelerating and excelling at their newest level. And can't wait to see what's coming next uh, for both of them. So let's get right to it. You ready? We're ready. All right, first up. Well, first we have Isaac Likely, who is an all-star formerly of Mansfield Timberview High School and is now at Oklahoma State University. Hey, Isaac. How y'all doing? Hey. Hi. What's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> getting right. Yes. <laughs> getting right. You're getting right. <laughs> All right. And next we're going to bring in Jalen Wilson, formerly of Denton Geyer High School. He is now in his freshman year at KU, Kansas uh, University of Kansas. What's up, Jalen? What's up? What's up? Hey, Will. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Cool. I'm good. Good to see y'all, man. Great seeing you guys. Great seeing you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for joining us on the broadcast. Yep. Got you. I know everybody is excited um, to hear from both of you. Again, this has been an interesting uh, year, to say the least. Um, I feel really badly for every freshman in college, every senior in high school. It's just those pivotal points in your lives, and we're just – this season of life has just kind of been cut short. Uh, well, just in our activities and what we were getting used to. And um, with this whole COVID-19 and it is affecting everybody. So I wanna hear directly from the two of you again, though, especially with such great momentum that you're having, uh, Jalen, you being a freshman, a standout, and of course, Isaac leading the way is, is you know, the, literally like the face of the team as far as I'm in my book. Um, What's what's life like? Talk about your experience right now. How abrupt, you know, you've been interrupted, and how are you feeling? And you know, how's your day to day? How's it going? Coping with the new the new season. You got it, Ice. You got it. Go ahead. You on mute, right. Isaac? <laughs> oh, go ahead, Jamie. All right, I'll start. I mean, <laughs> from a viewer's perspective, since I wasn't. Uh, able to play this year um I think it slowed things down as me like learning wise um I was learning a lot coming off my injury and uh you know I think that you know we had a really good team and a really good chance at doing some great things and in, uh, in March in the tournament so um everything that's going on really kind of just put that to an end as y'all can see and uh you know I think that we could have had a good really good run but I mean I'm learning a lot I was learning a lot and uh you know, just got to pick it up whenever we get the chance to get back on the court. You know, that's really it. How are you coping? I mean, how is it? How is now, I guess, really just your academically? How are you? Are you adjusting pretty well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we use this app uh, three times a week to uh, for about two hours a day. So, you know, we get to talk to our academic people to help us out and, um, you know, just – give us a better understanding, you know, what's going on since we're at home. We're not getting to have, you know, the one-on-ones that we used to at school. So it's a, it's an adjustment, but it's not that bad. All right, Isaac, what about you? Uh, it's been all right for me. I mean, I wanted to low-key finish out, like, the tournament and just see where things would have gone postseason-wise. Uh, ironically, we was going to play Jalen and them next at our Big 12 tournament. But, I mean, um, you know, things happen. And, you know, I mean, but I haven't let it stop me from grinding. I mean, I'm working out every day. I mean, I just now got to the gym. Now, since they said, especially, like, you know, you can't be around 10 or more people. So, I mean, it's about six of us right here, and we just working on our skills. That's all we're doing, sharpening our skills, our material, you know. Okay. Now, are you going to work out with your mask on, or what do we – what's the plan? Yeah, social distancing, anything. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, we got eight courts here. I'm, as you can see, I'm right here by myself. You know, me, I always like to rock by myself. I've always been that kind of guy. You know, uh, I mean, but I mean, yeah, I just come up here and I just really just trying to work on my game. You know, I'm so eager for next season. I feel like we're going to have a great year as a team. So, 
That's all it is. So, Isaac, Isaac, let me ask you this. What were some of the things that you learned? What were some of the highs and and lows of your sophomore season? Uh, some of the highs was, uh, you know, we had a great early success. We started off seven and out, eight and out, one of the two. Uh, first time in a long time in school history. So, you know, we felt like it was going to be a good season. Um, and we finished out the year real good, too. We finished out the year playing, being one of the hottest teams in the country, too, I feel like. Uh, but the lows was, you know, losing eight conference games in a row. And pretty much that was uh, right after I had just came back. I had missed four games or five games, one or two. I was out for a whole month. You know, I had got sick. And, you know, that's what really just held the team back, you know. Um, you know, at the time, we didn't really want to mention it. You know, we kind of had a, a idea and a, a mentality of, you know, what happened in the past, it don't matter. Let's just focus on, you know, that doesn't affect our season. But looking back at it, you know, all of us really talk about how much, you know, me missing those five games really turned our season uh, around and really made a big impact on how our season was going. I mean, but, you know, ain't no excuses. We just got to figure out ways to win games at the end of the day. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys are you guys were definitely making a run. You had some ups and downs and I tell you what, for next year, man, that's a, that's gonna be a special group next year that you, that Coach Mike is putting together down in Steelwater. I'm most definitely I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys fare up. So Jalen, what were some of your highs and lows from this season, from your freshman year of college? Uh obviously the lowest was not being able to play, uh getting hurt. But I'd say from the hop perspective, uh just being able to learn, you know, sit back and watch. You know, I feel like you learn a lot more when you're not playing and able to see mistakes that other people are making. So uh, I say just learning as much as I could. Uh, seeing the team do great. I mean, we won a lot of games, uh, had a lot of, you know, good atmospheres. And, you know, I got to experience a lot. So I say for overall, just the experience of, you know, practicing, you know, uh, how practice goes. Practice is different from high school practice, obviously. So. Doing that every day, playing against great competition and great guards in practice every day. So getting to work on my game and watching them in the game, you know, I'd say it was a lot higher. So what was the biggest difference from high school to college that you can speak on? What was, what was the biggest difference to you? Uh, I'd say intensity of the practice and uh, competition. Um, in high school, you don't have – 10 guys all trying to play, you know, 30, 30, 35 minutes. Like, you know, high school is kind of set in stone who's going to play, who's going to not. But in college, I mean, you got all guys trying to get to the same place at the end of the day. All guys, you know, want to be that guy on the team. So, I mean, every day in practice, you just got to come out and, you know, get up, play hard. Can't have an off day in practice because uh, sometimes that results in how, you, how you're going to play in the game and what position you are in the game. So, I say the intensity of it and the competition was two big things that stood out to me. And Isaac, how about you? Uh, to me, it was defense and and really just getting used to the college life. Like, even though I knew it was – you talking about from what's the difference on the basketball aspect, but really the college life has to do with basketball, period, if you really think about it. Uh, I'm saying defense because – in college, like, you got to make people miss shots. Like, just putting your hand up isn't good enough. Like, you know, like, yeah, that's, that's not good enough. You got to actually have effect on them. Like, you got to make them miss shots at the next level, you know. And then on top of that, uh, just by the lifestyle, I mean, like, I'm not used to having class at 8 a.m. and then having class again at 10 and then having to walk to go do weights, you know, walk back to go do weights practice. And then after that, I got to – do some more study hall at night, you know, or have a tutoring at night, you know, and, and all that all that stuff really affects you on the court. You know, it can all be uh, a lot at one time, and sometimes it bum rushes you, but you get used to it after, like, the first couple months, you know, take a little while. You know, that makes me think of a question, actually. I want to jump back to Jalen. Um, Jalen, because this was such a difficult year for you, being that you weren't able to play like, of course, you would have given anything for, can you talk to us about, you know, how did you mentally prepare and emotionally prepare? And how were you, how did you sustain yourself to accept, listen, this is what it is. I'm hurt. I just got to get through it. 
and what were some of the key factors in your being able to um, to overcome that big, huge adversity? Uh, really just not listening to a lot of outside people, you know, uh, staying close to God. You know, I believe everything happened to me for a reason. So, uh, you know, just I just embrace it all. You know, I, I've, uh, Isaac was there when we was on the same team. I broke my foot in AAU. So, uh, you know, I've always had setbacks and um, I've always found a way to get around them. So, you know, I just took this one like this, the next one that's going to happen in life. You know, it ain't always perfect. So I just, you know, try to find positives out of it, you know, so I got hurt. So now I get to sit back and, uh, you know, really watch basketball and break down film and stuff like that that I usually haven't done in high school. You know, I'm not really sitting at home watching film. I usually do it at, you know, at the gym. So, you know, being at home, watching film, uh, get my body right, eating right. Uh, I believe that my leg came back stronger. So, I mean, just being able to find positives out of it, you know, not thinking like, oh, I'm hurt. Just think like, oh, I got this much longer until I can play. That was really my mindset. Yeah. Good. And I'm assuming you had the support, massive support from your team. Yeah, yeah on my team, you know, I, I, I try to do my best I could. You know, if I can't play, I might as well find another way to impact the team. So just try to be a good guy, a good teammate, spirit, you know, times are tough always in the game. So try to be that guy that can talk everybody through anything, so stuff like that. That's good. That's good. Isaac, I got a question. I'm sorry, Coach. Let me ask this real quickly. It's about something um, – when you were talking about the way your schedule is and what you weren't used to, would you say, would you suggest, if ever asked, um, that there could be maybe a, were you prepared at all? I mean, because high school is obviously nothing like college. So if you could make a suggestion how to prepare, you know, kids going to the next level, and especially from an athletic perspective, what what suggestions would you make, if any? Uh, really, um, you know, I can't really just make too many suggestions like that because it's one of those things in life. You know how some people, parents say, there's some things I can tell you, and then there's some things that you're just going to have to learn on your own. And that's just one of them things you got to go through the life experience on your own, you know. Um, I can sit here and try to tell people and give them so many different reasons and so many different things on how to try to get prepared. But, you know, you're not just prepared like that you can't get prepared you gotta get, go through the situation to get used to it you know so you just gonna have to experience that once you get there it can't be really simulated if you feel what i mean that's good that's good go ahead coach so get i want you guys to take a step back and think about your recruiting process your respective recruiting process isaac talk a little bit about some of the factors that went into your college choice I lost. Oh, that's the connection. Related to my college, related to my college choice was solely off the relationship with me and Coach B. Um, I mean, and it's crazy. I tell people this story all the time. You know, uh, I was obviously I was signed to Fresno State, and then situation happened with the coach or whatever, and I had to get my letter of intent back. And there was so many different colleges recruiting me and stuff. And I mean, colleges coming to the school, to the house everything and it's just so funny because coach Boyd he ain't come to neither he ain't come to my school and he ain't come to my crib he ain't come to either one and then for some reason you know but me and him we talking every other day and like the relationship was just so great and then and then what really stood out to me is when he kept it honest with me you know he told me he was like you know I'm not gonna lie to you I have a red shirt point guard here and I have a grad transfer point guard you know but he was like I'm gonna tell you like I told them I didn't promise them anything you know, but just that they could come to this school and play for me, you know, and that's what he said. And then I was like, okay. He was like, everything here is going to be worked for, you know. And I said, all right, that's cool. So, you know, and he kept it a buck from day one. He said, I ain't going to hand you nothing. Whatever you earn will be given. And so, I mean, from day one, I started off like, you know, last person, you know, freshman, last point guard, you know. So, and then every day I just kept grinding and grinding. And slowly I seen how the staff looked at me differently every day, you know, just from grinding and grinding little by little and then you know by the grace of God I was blessed enough to start on the first day of the first game and you know I've been starting ever since so you know I just feel blessed and just feel great to be in this position and this is just solely off of me and his relationship you know he ain't come to the house none of that and I don't even think he ain't even recruit me before I signed all the other coaches that came they recruited me before I signed you know he ain't even recruit me before I signed and I've seen me play plenty of times which is crazy 
But, you know, it, it is what it is. And, you know, he was just an honest guy. Everything was genuine with him. So that's why I chose the school. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, relationships definitely matter. I speak on that all the time, man. Relationships and finding a fit over chasing a hype. I mean, Isaac had tons of schools chasing him, as did Jalen. And, uh, you know, those guys, they they found a fit. They were looking for a fit and the right relationship, and, it, and it's paying off. So, Jalen, talk a little bit about some of the factors that went into your choice. You had a bit of a a, a, a roller coaster ride during your process as well. Talk about that. Oh uh, yeah, uh, like I was. Oh shit, I'm back. Hold on, somebody called me. Yeah, um, yeah, I was committed to Michigan originally, and then uh, Coach B decided to go to the NBA, so I had a, a decommit late uh, with a month left before I had to go to. School. So really, I just thought about you know where I could see myself playing and where I could see myself fitting in and the culture and. And Coach Self, you know, Coach Self was probably one of the coolest coaches, like, off the court-wise that I really, you know, really felt intact with. Like, you know, he always kept it real with me. Um, he never, you know, he never gave me anything. And I didn't want to be given anything. So I feel like if a coach is promising you this and that, that, you know, that's not really what happens when you get to school. So, you know, uh, he just told me what was what I needed was what I was going to have to earn. So, you know, I liked the culture there. I liked everything about the team and where I could fit in at. So, you know, I feel like that was the best place for me to go. So, Jay, there's a lot of – since you've gone through the process, you're a top 50 recruit, you know, had major offers from just about every school in the country. What's your message to that high school player who's more concerned about his ranking than anything else? Does, does your ranking matter – How's your not, ranking uh, helping you right now at the University of Kansas, I guess? Ranking don't mean nothing. Uh, I know that from, from like, you know, just from seeing all my, you know, homeboys and people before me that go to school, like, ranking don't mean anything. I mean, me being ranked, I could be ranked 200. I could be ranked number one. It's about what you do at college. You know, college, they don't care about ranking. You know, there's plenty of, plenty of dudes that was McDonald's All-Americans that, you know, nobody knows who they are right now, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure it was plenty of people that was picked over me that might be not as hot as they were before, and, and Isaac himself. You know, Isaac starts at a, at a good a good D1 school, and, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people in this position that were, you know, maybe ranked ahead of them as a point guard, but now look at them. So it's like, mm -hmm. your ranking don't really mean nothing. It's really just work ethic. You know, if you want it, you can go get, you can go get it. So uh, I think the way you work is really what's important. You know, ranking four-star, five-star, three-star, don't matter. If you hooping, you go hoop, you know, if, uh, if you want to get to the league, you just got to do the little things and, and don't worry about that. Because when you worry about ranking, you're not worried about what's what's right there in front of you. you just worried about, you know, who's a five-star. Like, that stuff don't matter. As, as my man RJ said, I think it was – we were at Pango's a couple of years ago, and he, was, and he was – this is coming from – I think he was the number one kid in the country at the time. He was like, rankings can't save you when we step across those lines. Rankings don't matter when we get across okay. those lines. Can't. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite quotes. Because <laughs> it's always a target on your back. Yep. Always. Absolutely. Absolutely. Isaac, how about you? How's your ranking working out now? How's that helping you out now in the Big 12, uh, starting point guard? It ain't helping me at all. I don't really care about that, though. <laughs> they don't mean nothing. I don't really care about that, though, man, because it's like, it's like people like me. Like, I'm that guy, like. You know, I'm that guy, like, you know, that, that you ain't never heard. Like, a lot of people ain't never heard about, you know, going to, like, school type deal. Like, there's guys like me, you know, that's going to bust you. Like, that's going to do you when you come to practice the first day. Of, you know, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's guys like that. Like, it's a four-year, you know, you might be a McDonald's All-American or, or a five-star, but then there's a grad transfer that coach picked up that played for four years yeah. that's somewhere else. Yeah. And he going to outdo you, I'm telling you, because he's experienced, you know what to do, you know. So all that stuff really don't matter. It's about how you perform. And that's why I feel like I've thrived in college, because I've always been a guy that's oh. let my productivity talk for me. So, you know, it's, it's nothing new to me type deal. Like, I'm used to having to produce. And, you know, so it is what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. <laughs> So are y'all paying attention to what's, you know, what what's hot 
back home here, you know, when you're off on the college scene, but now everybody's home. So are, are you, you, you keeping in, <clears throat> you keeping in stride with uh, the up and coming, those coming behind you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely, uh, I know my brother and them, when they lost in the playoffs, they played a couple of sophomores that, that could really hoop. I know Kaysen and his brother Keaton, I know, I know them. Uh, I forgot the other kid on the team that's really good, I heard. Um, Rylan Griffin. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you talking about Texas Assault, I know Harrison. Harrison doing really well. Keontae, um, that's, that's been my little bro for a long time. Terrio, it's a lot of young dudes that's in Texas that's going to be really good growing up. So I've been watching a little bit because my brother's still in high school, so I, I try to, you know, pay attention to who you're going to be playing against, stuff like that. No, no, the kid at the kid at Louisville is filthy. I don't know who he is, but he's filthy. Keontae. Little light-skinned dude? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, filthy. He good, yeah. Him, Wade. Wade is filthy. Wade is gonna run the city next year. I'm telling you, Wade is filthy. Got still Wade, good. Taylor, Harrison, Ingram. Uh, oh, Harrison is filthy. Man, it's a lot of. It's a lot I'm, of I forgot about shot. Harrison. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. Harrison and Wade though. Like, they, I think they gonna run the city. They so, so, it. so speaking of that, and and I'm, I got two more questions, and we're gonna let you guys go. Speaking of Harrison and Wade. I believe that that Southern Assault 17U team that was just put together would give you guys a run for your money, that YGC 17U. What you think? Uh, yeah. Come on, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Against who? Against us, our team. You talking about when it was me, you, Kyler, Grant, Zach? That, it wouldn't even be close, no. dog. That team. That team right there. Boy. Hey, Coach Jabari, you playing now. Bro. That team that Come team on. was dirty, like, for real. That's you playing scary. now, big dog. You playing like, We went much. to Arkansas right. and was just smacking folks, like, everybody. <laughs> okay. I know Vaughn is out there. Vaughn, we're going to talk about this offline a little bit later, man. That's you not even close. Proud. Like, look at the matchups. <laughs> no, nah, Coach, Coach Jabari, you're going to for sure have to hit me up about this. Like, this, <laughs> this, 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 this is not show. okay. This is not okay. <laughs> that team was deep. Team wait, was wait, deep. wait, wait, Taylor, my guy. I think he's one of the nicest 2021s in the country. Yeah. But he knows it's a difference. Like he knows it's a difference. <laughs> it's a difference. It's a difference when you five seven and I'm six four, two ten. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a difference though. Like you feel me? It's different. But now nah, way, way when you get to college, it's gonna be something different. Yeah. 2021, 2021, I, I'm going to still be able to play college basketball, right? 2021, yep. I'll be a senior when way to freshman. He might be playing with me. I'll yeah, that's it. That's, play, play that's that. Well, I don't know. You're going you gonna to have such a big year next year. They might not let you stay in college. I know, but if they do, um, I'm, I'm hooping with Wade. Wade need to come to OSU. I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> the nah, but I'm, I'm, I'm for sure going to be – I'm for sure if – if God if God doesn't say my time is uh, this year, next year, whenever, I'm going for sure be hooping with Harrison. Harrison for sure. He need to come to OSU. That's my boy. <laughs> okay. okay. Same as if, God, if God don't bless me enough to go this year or next year, I'm going to be hooping with Harrison. I'm telling you, he coming mm. to OSU. He need to. So I got I got I to chime in because Jalen's mom just said, "All right, uh -oh. come on now, Coach Jabari, don't let COVID get to your head." <laughs> For real, <laughs> you tripping, dog? It's not even close. I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> Harrison, my God, for sure. I love that kid. Yeah. Okay, like listen. I know I'm. I know I'm gonna let y'all go because you guys got to get to your workouts, but y'all have developed some fans. So I, we got a couple more questions from the fans. They really want to know, Isaac, Troy Nalls asks, have you seen other players on campus who may have peaked in high school? He said, you said, have I seen other players on campus that what? Who may have peaked already, who peaked in high school. Uh huh. Oh yeah, you see it all the time in college. Like, you know, you see it all the time. Like, you're like, man, how, like, this kid, you be nice. yeah, you see it all the time. You see their videos in high school and stuff. But, it, you know, it all changes as time goes on. Um, yeah, you just got to keep your head ducked and keep working. That peak stuff is real, though. People really do peak. You know, it's real. But that's why you just got to keep working so you don't have no peak, so you don't have no ceiling. So you always getting better. That's what's best. That's what I say. Just keep working so there's no peak. 
and we're going to close out with this. I want both of you guys, Jalen, we'll start with you and we'll close with Ice. What's your best piece of advice I'm gonna come right now. for that high school recruit following in your footsteps? Wants to, wants to be where you are one day. Uh, I would say don't pay attention to politics and rankings. Don't let that stuff get in your head. I feel like what's already set in stone is going to happen. Like, they already know who going to be all Americans and stuff like that. I feel like you just got to – I know from my perspective, I used to – they used to kind of bug me because I'm like, why can I be it? But it's deeper than just basketball. It's, it's just like – it's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So, I would say don't worry about that. Just hope, keep working, and – uh everything going to take care of itself because, like I said before, plenty of those dudes fall out of place because, I mean, it, the rankings ain't real. You know, none of it's real. It's all political. It's all just, you know, we want this guy, so they're going to push it. So I would say just keep hoping. Same advice. Isaac, how about you? I say the same thing. Just keep working hard and always just focus on, like, you know, of course, support your friends and everything, but, like, never focus on the next man hand. Like, you know, always focus on you and your race, what you got going on. You know, just like, you know, my people tell me, like, you know, don't look at the next man hand because you can't play his cards. You know what I'm saying? So just look, focus on what you got going on, you know, because I trust me, my friends, I got friends that, that went one and done. I got friends that, that went straight overseas and then been to the league, you know, but I ain't worried about them. I support them. You know what I'm saying? I got love for them. But, you know, I'm just focused on me and my race. If it takes me four years of college and in the league, you know, that's what it takes. If it takes you to go overseas, play for a couple years to go to the league, you know, that's what it takes. But, you know, at the end of the day, I tell my, my friends all the time, like, we all going to be at that same finish line, you know, in the NBA, you know, so. I don't know when I'm gonna get there, but when I get there, I'm gonna embrace it. You know, I'm gonna love it. So I'm gonna get there when I get there. You feel me? Everybody has different journeys, man. Run your race. Yeah. That's what you said. Run your race. Don't worry about the next man. That's a wise advice from two of the top players in college basketball. Guys, thank you guys for joining us on the broadcast, man. Good luck next year. Uh, those of you watching, remember these names because you're going to hear from them a whole lot come next season. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Shout, shout out Heads Up Foundation, man. Shout out. Shout out. To shout out, shout out Heads Up and shout out Harrison Ingram, man. <laughs> he shout trying to recruit. Ingram. Yeah. Hey, you gonna let him out recruit you, Jalen? I'm marking. I'm marking. I'm already I'm working, working on it. It's all good. I ain't even gotta say nothing. Hey, listen, guys. I just want to say that again. It's been so devastating all the changes that happened this year. We were really looking forward to having you guys join us for All Star Week uh, 2020. It was just, it was gonna be bigger and better. Isaac, do you ever think about us at All Star time? Do you ever think about your All Star experience with Heads Up? Man, I think of everything. I think of everything. It was all fun. Good. I ain't going to lie to you. It was all fun, for real. That was, that was a great year. Every year, it's just been fantastic. So, um, you know, y'all are ambassadors for life, uh, all stars for life. So, um, you know, we're very proud of you. Glad we could chat with y'all today. Thanks for having me. Thanks. My gosh, appreciate y'all joining us, man. Y'all yep. be safe out there. Social distancing, man. Be Let's safe. Be for Let's sure. Stay sure. under control so we can get back in the gym. <laughs> yep. Bet. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good one. All right. Later. Bye, y'all. Thanks for joining. Is that it? And that's all. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>